Hello and welcome to Microsoft Hates Greg. In my last video, I created uh, a data mart, which is a preview feature in uh, the Power BI service. Basically, like, more or less lets you build a data warehouse or a data, well, they call it a data mart uh, um, within Power BI. And it also creates <clears throat> an associated uh, data set along with the data mart. Um, and so in today's video, what I'm gonna be doing is something I think is kind of interesting. Um, so data flows within uh, Power BI service allow you to create, basically it's a Power BI query, uh, Power Query query within uh, the service, allows you to author those, it's been around for a while. One thing that you cannot do with a with a data flow is you can't create uh, connect a data flow to a Power BI data set. Um, however, you can connect a Power a data flow to a data mart. And since you have since the data mart and the data set are kept in sync with one another, it's more or less kind of the same thing um, in theory, right? So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to get that done. And the first thing, the first step you need to do in getting that done is you need to go to your settings or your data mart, go to your server settings. And then it gives you a connection string, and this is a connection string to get to the Azure SQL database that's behind uh, your data mark. OK, so I've got that copied, and so now I can go uh, back to my data flows. It says I don't have any data flows, and I'll just go back here, go to data sets and data flows, say new, say data flow. I'll click on that. Now you might get a warning. It's like, you know, now that whenever you connect data, you try to connect, create a data flow, it's like, do you really want to create a data mark? Um, and so you can, uh, I, I had already gone down that path and I checked the box to said, don't ask me again, because I know whether I'm going to, I know when I'm trying to create a data flow and I know when I'm trying to create a data mark. Thank you very much, Power BI. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to select this define new tables. And as you can see here, if I go to Power Platform, I don't have the option of connecting to a data set, but I do have the option of connecting to a Power BI data mark. So I'm going to go ahead and obviously it's in beta. I'm going to click that. I'm going to paste in just using control V. I'm going to paste that in. Now, again, I had already set up a connection for this. Um, otherwise, you'll be asked to you know, create a connection for this. Uh, it's pretty simple. You just have to sign in with your organizational account. Don't use a data gateway because it's, it's all in the Power BI service. So you don't need a, a data gateway or anything like that. Um, and so now I can click on next. Okay, so in this example, I'm just gonna create a, a single table in my data flow for employees. Um, so I'm gonna check that box and then I'm going to click on transform data. So I've already transformed the data coming from my source systems, right? Um, I'd done that by eliminating like the French and Spanish columns for a bunch of things or, you know, a bunch of description fields that, are, that were other than the English description fields and that. But I can further, you know, transform this data within this data flow. So, for example, I can come over here. I can get rid of this table, this uh, column that I don't need. I'll remove that column. And let's say I want to only, I only want active employees. So I'm just going to filter the status where it's current, click OK. Uh, and so now I can save and close this data flow. So again, a data flow is going to take the data from the source. It's going to persist that into Azure Blob Storage or Gen 2 Data Lake Storage. Um, I'm going to call this Active Employees. Say a list table of all current employees. OK, I'm going to go ahead and save that. And I'm going to go ahead and refresh it. So I need to refresh it, obviously, because I need to get that data from the data mart now into uh, the Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage. So I've taken from my source system into the data mart, which is an Azure SQL database, and now I've taken that within this data flow and then I'm persisting that those tables and that in this Azure Gen 2 um, data lake storage. OK, so one thing I'm going to do on this is, OK, I've got this. I'm going to go to, no, that's just the description. I'm not sure. 
So there it's got, you know, here's all my column names and my data types and all that sort of thing. I don't want to edit the table properties. That's just that uh, incremental refresh. I can set that up. Since I'm a PPU, I could actually add a machine learning model to this to do predictive measure to predictive measures per, potentially, that sort of thing. All right, so I'm going to go back and we're going to take a look at this. So here is my active employees data flow. Now, what I want to do on this is I want to go to settings on this. I'm going to show this both using this in Excel as well as uh, the experience you get <clears throat> by using this in Power BI desktop as well. Um, but one thing I want to be able to do is I want to be able to use this either as an import um, into a Power BI desktop file or as a direct query. Um, in Excel, I believe you only, you only, the only option you have is to import, really. Um, so if you want to use direct query with this, again, I'm in PPU, so I have this option. So what you want to do is you want to turn this enhanced compute engine settings, you want to turn that to on and apply that. And then I'll show you here coming up exactly how to use this in Power BI Desktop and the experience that you're going to get. Okay, so save my changes. So now, Let's go ahead and we'll flip over into Excel and I'll show you how to use this from Excel. So again, I can go to data. I can say get data and from Power Platform, from data flows, like that. I'm probably logged in with the wrong account. So I may have to log in with the right account. Yeah, this is gonna be wrong. Oh no, okay, good. Good, it knows who I am. All right, so my MS hates Greg workspace, active employees, and there's my table for active employees. Let's go ahead and load that. Maybe it didn't quite refresh yet. Mm, nope, it's got zero rows. Did this thing not refresh for some reason? Let's go back to here, go back to my Active employees will hit refresh. Pretty sure I hit refresh data. It said it completed. It's very like three seconds. It completed in three seconds. That seems odd to me. Well, it says completed. reason why this isn't working. Try this again. All right, active employees. Oh, now it's got data in it. Okay, so eh, you never know, man. All this stuff, dealing with preview and beta stuff, you never know what you're going to get. Okay, so let's go ahead and load this. But you know, you notice I could transform that data, even transform that data, bringing it into Excel. Okay, so here's all of my active employees that have been brought in through my data flow. But I have the option, if I want to, I can hover over this, I can edit this data flow. Sorry if you can hear my phone buzzing, but it, you know, again, I have the option to transform this even further. So let's see, say that I just want to come in here and I only want um, engineering, uh, finance, uh, information services, marketing and production, right? So I can click on that, I can click okay. And now that's filtered my information coming in and it's going to update here in Excel. But pretty cool. I mean, so you really have like, you know, you, know, you have multiple different options of transforming your data. Um, I think one of the limitations maybe around data flows you have to be careful of, right, is I can't edit that data flow to bring in like the non-current employees. If I've already filtered the data flow when I created the data flow to only bring in active employees into that Azure Data Lake Gen 2 storage, then I, I can't kind of reverse engineer that here. I can only work with the current information that is in the Azure Gen 2 data lake storage. 
right, which only has my active employees. It doesn't have all my inactive and active employees that's sitting in my at in my data mart. OK, so something to be, be aware of. Um, so now let me show you the experience because on, in terms of I activated that direct query or import, right? So here I am in Power BI desktop. I can now go say get data. I can say data flows. Again, I may have to change my ID. We'll find out. Nope, good. I'm logged in with the right credentials here. Now this, obviously this looks extremely similar to the interface within Excel. So there it is when I say that. And again, I could transform this data or I could load it. I'm gonna click on load and I'll show you what happens here because I have that advanced compute engine on. So here it is. So this is this is what happens when you have an advanced compute engine on, which gives you the ability to do import or direct query. So I could say I want to connect to this via via direct query instead of import mode, and click OK. And as you can see down here, my storage mode is direct query. I could change it to import if I wanted to, and uh, and that's it. Really, that's all I had for this video. I think this is kind of a cool thing. I don't know if they're going to, because we now have direct query for um, for Power BI data sets. I'm wondering if they're going to eventually bring data flows and allow you to create uh, data flows ex directly against uh, Power BI data sets using direct query. Um, I don't know. Maybe they will. Um, you know, maybe they'll even allow you to do import mode from data sets and that. But in the interim, you know, or if they never release that, at least we can go back to if we create our data sets via the data marks feature, then we can actually create data flows against you know more or less the data set um, because that data mark and that data set are linked. That's all I had for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.